Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. You know, like they was just singing in the last song, we got uh, the Lord and blessed us with a lot of understanding concerning his word. But we need to always remember that we can have a lot of understanding and still end up in the lake of fire. Hmm. And that's what, that's what we have to be mindful of. Paul said in Corinthians, I think 1 Corinthians 9, he said that he's running a race, he's fighting a fight, and he realized that after he preached to other people, he himself could be a castaway. Because you can have a whole lot of understanding, you can be preaching to millions of people and telling them the truth and still end up in trouble with God in the end if you don't start and continue to do exactly what he wants you to do. So we're going to deal with, with really a basic lesson today that's of utmost importance because you can know about some of the great things in the Bible. We know the kingdom going to be on the earth in the end. We know that we're not going to heaven. God is coming down to the earth to set a heavenly kingdom up here. Jesus told you to pray for that, thy kingdom come. We know ultimately our goal is to be born again, and that's not just something in the mind that take place. That's a physical change that's going to take place at the resurrection when you get a new body, plain and simple. We know how the war of Armageddon is going to play out. We know that there's no trinity, hmm. according to the Bible, but we know that there's two members, the Father and the Son, that make up the Godhead. So a lot of people don't understand that. But, and, we, and we can name some other things that the Lord has showed us out of the Bible, but a basic lesson like this is more important than all of those things. Because if you don't remember to operate in humility, knowing all of that won't do you no good. It won't do you no good at all. So that's what we're going to talk about today, something basic, humility mm -hmm. before honor. Humility before honor. And that comes directly out of the Bible, like a lot of lessons that we do, we just title them from a Bible scripture. That's why our text is, but we, we read a whole lot of other scriptures to confirm, to back up, because the Bible tells you rightly divided. The Bible tells you how do we get knowledge and whom we going to give understanding to? He said line upon line and line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. So that's why we read all these different scriptures to paint the picture correctly. So this is no different when we talk about humility, because I almost titled this something else. I almost titled this, Humility Has Left the Building. That's what I almost titled it. Because that's the way it is in this world. Hmm. Humility is a, is, is a rare trait in this world. Because we are groomed, we are taught from childhood to be prideful to be proud, to put ourselves out front. We are taught that from, from the beginning, unless you've been blessed to have somebody that know the word. But even when you go out in society, when you leave your house, you can have good teaching at your house, the world gonna teach you something else and you have to beware of that. Because that's the way the world is. The world is contrary to God. The world is full of pride. The Bible tell you that. So, when it comes to humility, very few people have it. Even those of us who know that we have to be humble and strive to operate in humility, hey, that's a battle. That's a battle. It's an ongoing battle. Just like Paul said, running a race or fighting a fight. It is a battle, and we got to fight that battle to the end because of everything around us is, is contrary to that. To, to succeed, to really get over in this world, humility don't do it the way the world is structured. 
So to operate in humility, it really takes some trust in God. And those are the people that's going to get over in the end. But right now, the world honors the aggressive, the proud, those that don't care about, about nobody else. That's who get honored by Satan in this world, because Satan is the God of this world. But God is telling you something else. He's telling you, in the big picture, if you want to get some honor, if you want to be blessed, like a lot of people say they're blessed, if you really want to be blessed, you got to operate in humility, and that means humbling yourself across the board to what God is saying in his word, period. See, it's humility that we are here today on the seventh day, which the Bible tells us about. We humbling ourselves to what the Bible says, even though most people in the world don't believe that. Most people don't humble themselves to that because they think it don't matter. But God told you the seventh day, and if you're going to believe him and fear him and, and, and operate in some humility toward him, you would do that. So it's across the board. But it's not just dealing with God. It's, of course, dealing with our fellow brothers and sisters. We also have to operate in humility. So it's across the whole spectrum. So we're going to get into a humility before honor. And we're going to start off where it's at, Proverbs, the 15th chapter. Humility before honor. Proverbs 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 31. Proverbs 15 and verse 31. Because like I was saying a minute ago, a lot of people say, they go to church all the time. They say, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed of the Lord. But they don't realize that's just not something that comes without you doing something. And that's what a lot of those so-called blessed people believe. Now, the Lord is telling you, you will only get blessed for humbling yourself to him and being obedient to him. And the same people that say they're blessed, they have done away with obedience. They have done away with the commandments. They have done away with the law of God. But they're saying they are blessed. But the Lord is only, only offering blessings to people who humble themselves to him and do his will. So humility before honor, if you want to get some honor, you have, you're going to have to operate in humility. And if you're not operating in humility, then you got something else coming because you're operating in something else and therefore you got something else coming. Proverbs 15 and 31, we get to it. Go ahead. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Okay, now first he said the ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. See, this is a, this is a simple thing about humility that we have a hard time dealing with, brothers and sisters. And that is even being corrected in the smallest thing. It don't even have to be important. Somebody tell you, you messed up, you be ready to fight. In a lot of cases. Even I said this before, years ago, when I was still driving a truck, I had to check myself. Because... You know, when you, like, it ain't like nobody, you, you're not, you're not going to make no mistake. But I guess that's what I was trying to pretend to my bosses. So, I, boy, I had an answer for everything. And, I, I, you know, I'm trying to believe in the Lord, so I ain't going to lie. But I ain't going to give in to that I was wrong either. It was, it was something else. And finally... It dawned on me because you have to really think hard to be trying to maneuver mm -hmm. around situations, especially trying not to lie. Finally, it dawned on me, why are you taking all this trouble to go through this? You know, the man say, well, you picked the wrong trailer up. No, nah, that's the trailer you gave me. And I, oh, that's the one I wrote down. I heard it wrong on the intercom, something, anything. But then it dawned on me, which, what's the big deal? Okay, yeah, I picked up the wrong trailer. It ain't the end of the world. 
but we get defensive automatically mm -hmm. and try to act like, you know, we can't make no mistakes. When God is telling you just the opposite, just be humble. Operate in some humility. It won't be the end of the world. Because if you humble yourself, God is telling you he's going to exalt you. So correction, that's one of the easiest signs to show, going to tell on you whether or not you can operate in humility when you get some correction. And, it, and it's really, like I said, don't be nothing big. It can be that simple. I'm going to use myself as another example. Not too long ago, you know how you, you just make statements you know you shouldn't have made as soon as you make them. <laughs> soon as you make you be wanting to grab them back. How did I say that? I made a statement. I made a statement to a sister. It ain't no, don't be get the wrong idea. It ain't nothing like what y'all might start thinking because I say a sister. <laughs> I know y'all mind are running rampant. But no, nah, I made a statement to a sister, and I knew as soon as I made a statement, boy, I shouldn't have said that. And then right away in my mind, I tried to fix it up to make it okay. And then made another stupid statement, because I'm just going to make stupid statements, not because it's okay. <laughs> Instead of right then, I should have just said, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It would have been over with. Because it really wasn't that big of a deal, but it still was a stupid statement. And then turn around, and it was a stupid statement. She said something to me about it later, and, and, and she kind of was playing with it. And I, I knew when I said it, it was a stupid statement. I should have said it. But yet still, I said, oh, you knew I was just playing. But yet still. So I still tried to cover up a little bit. And then it took me about three weeks later, the Lord showed me. Boy, you know, that was stupid what you said. And I had, took three weeks for me to finally say, look, point blank, that was stupid. I shouldn't have said it. When I could have said that the first minute. You know why? Because I knew it as soon as it came out of my mouth. But that show you, that show you humility is a work in progress. You always got to be conscious. So he said here, Proverbs 15, verse 31, he said, the ear that heareth the reproof of life abiding among the wise. See, that's somebody that's gonna listen, that's gonna get reproved, even this is gonna save your life. Because we we try to tell people things out the word of God that's going to save their life, and they be arguing to the cows come home. Mm -hmm. And that's, 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 that's because they don't want to be humble. They didn't heard something else, the false prophet that lied to them all of their life, and they cannot reconcile the difference, so they're going to argue and don't have no proof to stand on what they're saying. Even would tell you, I had somebody tell me recently, you know, I, I said something about the Bible, and they said, and they tried to come against it, and then they tried to say, well, I don't know the Bible like you, but all I know is, you know, some cliche <laughs> that they didn't heard. So I can't, I don't know the Bible, but I know, you know, God is just merciful. Yeah, God is merciful, but he only merciful on those that, fear him and do what we talk about in this lesson, operating humility. Mm -hmm. So it just go on and on. They keep trying to fight against something you admit you don't know the Bible. So what are you basing your belief on? But it's humility. They, they refuse to humble themselves. So he said, read that again, verse 31, Proverbs 15 and 31. Go ahead. The ear that heareth reproof of life abideth among the wise. See, the one that hear the reproof of life, though, they're going to abide among the wise. They're going to humble themselves and say, hey, that is right. I've been believing a lie. It? it ain't the end of the world. Thank God you found out it was a lie. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, verse 32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. See, but on the other hand, the person that refuseth instruction, they despiseth their own soul. Mm. They hurt themselves. You heard the saying, you cut off your nose to spite your face. You got mad at your face. You think you're going to hurt your face. He said, he that refuses instruction despises his own soul, but what? But he that heareth reproof, get it understanding. But the one that hear reproof, 
But reproof is don't 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 sound pleasing to the ear initially mm -hmm. unless you train your ear to accept it. Reproof don't sound pleasing. Because you think somebody talking about you or they coming against you when they could just be trying to straighten you out. Because you can make a mistake. 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Uh -huh. And before honor is humility. See, now that's where the title of the lesson is. He said the fear of the Lord, though. See, that's what we need in all things, the fear of the Lord. That will allow you to operate in humility across the board. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. See, you don't have no wisdom until you start to fear the Lord. Understand how dangerous he is, which most people don't. Understand what he would do to you. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. See, you got to operate in some humility if you want to get some honor. That comes first. Humility before honor. That's the title of the lesson. So, now if you don't have no humility, that's telling me you're not going to get no honor according to what we read right here. But go to Matthew 18. Let's go to the New Testament. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Matthew 18. Because we know the whole Bible go together. The Old Testament saying the same thing the New Testament. Some people try to separate them. No, it's the same thing. See, and again, you got people say the New Testament telling you you don't have to do nothing Jesus did at all. But what do you have to operate in humility according to then? That means you got to do something. Matthew 18 and verse 1. Jesus had to tell the disciples something. This telling, this, this don't show us that you can be around the gospel. You can be around the truth and still be thinking the wrong thoughts in your mind. And therefore, if you're thinking the wrong thoughts, eventually they're going to come out. You're going to start saying stuff that you don't even need to be saying. Uh, Matthew 18 and verse 1. But the good thing, if you listen to correction, you can get straight now. 18 and 1. Go ahead. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? See, now they, they got to be crazy. Yeah. They come, they, now they, they, they was, first they was arguing about this by themselves. They really didn't want him to know at first. Then they got so out of hand with it, they going to go use him for a witness. Come on, tell us. Tell us, Jesus. Hmm. Who the greatest in the kingdom? I guess one of them expecting to get pointed to. Go ahead. Let's see what Jesus did. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. See, now Jesus didn't point to none of them. He called a little child. And set him in the midst of him and did what? And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, now they are ready to put themselves in the kingdom of heaven automatically and, and, and want to know who the greatest. Jesus brought a child and said, Except you be converted and become as little children. Humble yourself that much. You shall not enter into the kingdom. You won't be great in there. You won't even get in. Mm. That's what he's letting them know. Go ahead, verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this child, uh -huh. the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. See, but whosoever humble himself, yeah, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Because just like we just read in Proverbs, before honor is humility. Jesus is basically saying the same thing. Humble yourself and you will be great. You don't have to push yourself to the front of the pack. That's one thing I understood when I was at my old church in Chicago. When it came to teaching, you had some brothers just fighting to try to teach. Oh, I want to teach. I didn't, I didn't worry about that because one thing I knew that whatever the Lord wanted me to do, nobody could stop that. So I knew... Hey, if the Lord wanted me to teach, I was going to teach. I didn't have to be there. I want to teach. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. And he's letting you know if you humble yourself, then he going to put you where you need to be. He going to put you. He going to honor you. But now, 
So he said in verse 4, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Let's go to Philippians 2. Because Jesus didn't just say it, he gave us an excellent example himself. Philippians, the second chapter. So instead of fighting and trying to argue over who's the best, that's what the disciples was doing. Jesus told them, you need to take another approach. The approach you need to take is humility. Don't be putting yourself forward like you so great. Matter of fact, put somebody else forward. And then that's how you would be great. Philippians 2 and verse 2. Philippians 2 and verse 2. Go ahead. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Uh-huh. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but mm -hmm. in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Okay, now, <clears throat> Paul had to preach this to the Philippians. He said, be like-minded, being of one accord, and one mind. Then at verse 3, he said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. See, and that's what people are seeking in this world. Even we get in churches, even churches that's teaching the truth, which it ain't that many of them. But even you can be in a church teaching the truth and still get caught up in vain glory and strife. That's why he's preaching this to the Philippians. So he said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. See, you seeking some vain glory. That's what the apostles was after when they talked about who the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. They thinking pride that I'm better than the next, <clears throat> next individual. That's what they thinking. But Paul said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. See, that's humility right there. Lowliness of mind. You learn not to think so much of yourself when you get some understanding. Whereas you might have thought, like the, old, like the saying is, you was all that and a bag of chips. But then you realize that you ain't nothing but a lump of dirt. Mm -hmm. God made you from dirt, and if you don't make it to the Lord return, you're going to be dirt again. That's it. Until he wake you up from that. 